We're back with our Pro Video Coalition NAB 2024 coverage, and I'm here with Raul Alba from Zero Density. Now, Zero Density is a virtual production company, or at least that's the, the core of what you guys yeah, do, that's right? Exactly true. Uh, why don't you give us a little history of the company and what, what you guys do? Well, Zero Density was founded in, back in 2016 uh, in Turkey by two veterans of the uh, media industry that realized that the uh, gaming industry had a much better quality when it came to, to generate content than the actual broadcast industry. And they decided to take a gaming engine that was essentially designed for gaming uh, into the broadcast industry and just bridge the technical gap between what's needed in the broadcast and what this, let's say, vanilla um, gaming engine uh, will allow doing. And that's how it all started. All right. Yeah. So. A lot of people might, may wonder, Unreal Engine already does virtual production. Uh, you can, it's no longer free mm -hmm. for film use, uh, but it is readily available. So why would someone want zero density if they can already get Unreal Engine? What are you guys offering? Well, if you're producing films, you might be able to go along with Vanilla Unreal and, and do a lot of stuff. It, because film is basically offline. If you need to stop for half an hour to change something, doesn't matter. The talent go take a coffee and you move on. But in broadcast, you cannot afford doing that. In broadcast, you need to be reliable. In broadcast, you need to have connection to your workflow. You need to be able to, um, to be efficient every day, all the time, no pauses, no downtime. So we create all these uh, um, hooks to the broadcast workflow. We create all these uh, um, improvements in the workflow, connecting, making it reliable, making it easy to use for everybody. So you don't need to have a super graphic expert uh, sitting next to it every time you're doing something. So this is uh, our add value in in, um, in the whole production, virtual production, virtual studio, um, XR uh, world. Great. And so are you exclusively focused on broadcast or do you have other clients outside of broadcast? No, let's say broadcast was a trigger for us to create that. So we, we found that there was a big need there. But once you have a product that works in broadcast, there are other industries we have similar um, needs. Like we have corporations that uh, use our system because they need to present internally, they need to um, teach, like we have universities and academies that teach remotely and they want to have like a nice looking uh, background and uh, and we also have a lot of customers in corporations that do internal trainings and internal meetings, Zoom is not good enough and uh, a real studio is not feasible, so they just do virtual production for this for this context. And now you actually have a fairly scalable solution, right? You, you're you installed in big studios like CBS Studios. Yep, yep. But you also have green screen solutions. It's not all LED volumes, no. right? It's, it, let's say the, um, Virtual Studio green screen was the, the first uh, core product of the company. Uh, now it, all, of, oh, all the industry is about um, XR and LED screen. And we obviously have a very good solution for, for XR. But still, green screen can be suitable for small customers, for big customers. We, we have. Uh, CBS, for example, using green screen. They chose, they could have chosen uh, XR, and they chose to use green screen because for their needs, that was more suitable. And uh, we can scale from the smallest university to a, a small corporation to, as you said, the big networks, the, the tier one uh, broadcasters uh, anywhere in the world, and the Hollywood studios. So we have solutions for, for all of them. And what does it look like if I decide to, you know, maybe I'm a, large corporation with a virtual production mm -hmm. portion of the uh, video department or whatever you want to call right. it and I decide to go with zero density uh, how where do you guys come into the picture are you helping plan the entire stage setup how's that work well, we're normally providing technology but we understand that not everybody has the means to integrate the staff themselves and to build their studios themselves so we also consult a lot with them and help them find the right uh, glue around that and choose the right lighting, the right cameras, the right technology around that, so the whole thing will be seamless. And uh, even if we don't provide uh, content creation services, 
We have a lot of partners that we know are experts using our products that can, can help uh, these uh, companies that are not media experts, but they have a media department to, to produce and to, to create content adapt to their needs. Yeah. And big news in NAB, what, what are you guys announcing yeah. or talking about? Always, I mean, we have uh, um, extensive uh, product range, but the latest news is uh, Lino. Lino is um, on a graphic solution that uh, connects to uh, um, to epic motion design. Uh, it's been a big uh, buzz in the industry. We are adding on top of a very nice graphic engine and authoring tools all the layer that you need to connect to, um, to the workflow, to newsroom, to automation, and to make it easy to use into the broadcast environment. Uh, and for the first time in a long time, there will be a single solution, single platform that you can use for any kind of graphics, for pre-production graphics, for owner graphics, for Virtual Studio, for XR, connected to Newsroom, everything. So that's something that didn't happen in the industry for at least 10 years. And on, on that, just on an industry level, would you say at this point, if you are a graphic designer working in broadcast that Unreal Engine Knowledge is probably the most important oh, yes. thing to know right now? Absolutely. If I will be a designer, the first thing I will be doing tomorrow is learning Unreal. It's going to be a, a wave that will swipe everything. Right. Yes, yes. And, and what's great about zero density, I know for a while there, just because of the magnitude of the switch to 5.0, mm -hmm. uh, you guys were on 4.2 for a while, 4.26. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but now you're at, you're at parity and you're fully on, the, on track. So yeah. when when 5.4 comes out, you'll be ready to move 5.4 and yeah. so on. We, we, we realized that uh, we were so deep into the Unreal Engine that every small change that Epic did required us to refactor a lot of stuff. It ended up um, sucking up a lot of energy and time until we decided to stop it and change the architecture. So we have a um, platform that is easier to integrate, has lower touch, we move out a lot of the processing that um, that we were doing inside Unreal. We took it out. So the end result is that we have more control on the processes. And if uh, Epic changed something in um, their newer version of Unreal, for us it's easier to adapt to these changes and have a, a new version of, um, of reality um, weeks after Epic's release a new one. And we are working on 5.4 already, and we will be let's say, ready whenever Epix releases 5.4. Great. So if people want to know more about Zero Density, where do they go? Booth South Lower 2038. Okay. <laughs> or ZeroDensity.io. <laughs> and the, the website's ZeroDensity.io. .io. .io. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah.